Hello beautiful souls and welcome to the very first pick a card here on my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Kate and I'm so incredibly excited to meet you. Today's video is not only our first pick a card video, but it's actually going to be our first collaborative video. This is going to be a partner video to a video that my dear friend Chloe has up on her channel. If you haven't met Chloe yet, please, please please go to her channel. I promise you will not be disappointed. She puts out pick a card videos, videos on spirituality, and the coziest vlogs in the whole wide world. Not only is Chloe a fantastic creator, but she is also one of my best friends. So please make sure that you go to Chloe's channel for her pick a card on what you need to release during this Leo new moon. And I will have all of her links down in the description below, as well as a little card up here in the corner for her video. So a little background on myself and why I'm actually putting out this video. As you can see, a lot of my content up to this point has been video games. I have always been fascinated with the spiritual and the supernatural. I actually bought my first tarot deck in secret at age 15 and I've been very off and on with being active over the years. However, this year that is all changing. I am finally committed to bettering myself and I'm going to be using spirituality as a tool to do so. My name is actually a huge part of my mission as a content creator, totally caked. That means what you get here is going to be 100% totally and authentically me. I have spent way too many years pushing off what I've wanted to do either because I was too afraid to try and fail or I've had other people put it in my head that I simply wasn't good enough. I'm 32 years old and it's time to start chasing my passions and I hope that by sharing them with all of you, maybe I can actually inspire you to do the same. And so thank you again, Chloe, for asking me to do this video with you. I probably wouldn't have had the courage to do it on my own, to be honest. <laughs> so now on to the reading. So the Leo new moon is taking place on Thursday, July 28th, and it is going to be a time to celebrate life. The energy of this new moon is going to be generous, fun, and loud. This is a time to be creative, be flirty, and to spoil yourself like the divine being that you are. So to assist you in this journey, I chose to do a spread to guide you on how to empower yourself or how to channel your inner lion for this moon cycle. The new moon is a time to plant your ideas and to come up with plans on how to help them thrive. I hope that this video helps you do just that. We all deserve to have the confidence of our lovable Leos. Be your biggest fan and take a chance on yourself this month. So in case this is your first pick a card video, let me take a moment to help you explain the different piles and different ways on how you can make a choice. So first off, there are no wrong choices. You can listen to one pile or you can listen to all of them. But the most important thing is that you're going to have to trust yourself. You will not choose incorrectly. Some may choose off simply a feeling that you have by looking at the cards. Others of you may want to go to the description where I have the timestamps and maybe see if any number sequences are there that call out to you or maybe your lucky numbers are present or to maybe help you with something a little bit more visual if you're like me, I actually have three fall candles that are going to correspond to each pile as well. Maybe the name itself will spark a feeling in your chest or the description of the smell will unlock a warm memory. For pile number one, we have leaves. The scent is golden nectar, red apple, and clove spice. For pile number two, we have spiced pumpkin and patchouli. The scent is rich pumpkin, warm patchouli, and just a touch of cinnamon sugar. And then for pile number three, we have autumn woods. The scent is English lavender, dark walnut, and white amber. So then before we get started, I'm going to give you all just a moment to kind of sit and meditate on the cards. Feel free to go ahead and pause the video if you think you might need a little bit longer to choose, and I'll be back in just a moment. Thank you. 
All right, welcome back, pile number one. I'm gonna go ahead and get this candle lit for you and I'll be sending all of the warm and cozy vibes your way. All right, so the basic layout that I chose to do for this reading is going to be four main tarot cards and then I'm gonna be adding oracle cards on top of those to help give some additional meaning to our cards and ask for more insight. So the questions that I asked are gonna be, what are your greatest inner strengths? How to step into that power? What traits do you need to celebrate more? And what areas in your life can you take greater risk in? So let's go ahead and get started. All right, pal number one. So what I got for your greatest inner strength, we have... Okay, we have the Three of Pentacles. So if you take a look at the card here, I'm gonna pull that up a little bit closer for you. If you take a look at this card, you can see that we have two oxen here and they are actually working together to carry this load. You can see they're yoked up here. One of them is holding their head high and proud and is exuding power and leadership and the other is following in their footsteps. So the Three of Pentacles represents the value of a difference in opinions and ideas in kind of a collaborative setting. I see this as you being the bridge between different people. You are someone who knows when to take the lead and when to take a step back and when to be the follower in the situation. You know that every person that you encounter has something to offer the world and you are always willing to actively listen and to share your knowledge as well. I love that for you. <laughs> so now how are we going to be able to step into that power? We have justice. Okay. So in this deck, the Justice card is actually going to be half woman and half ostrich. And that is an allusion to the Egyptian god Anubis, who would weigh the soul of the dead against an ostrich feather to decide their fate. So justice is all about the search for truth. And as you explore that truth, you'll be able to discover more about yourself and who you're meant to be. Be prepared to question everything. Challenge yourself. Explore the unknown, be curious, and be unafraid. Okay, so what traits do you need to celebrate more, pile number one? We have, okay, we got the King of Wands, which I also love that the King of Wands is depicted with a lion. I mean, can it be any more pointed? <laughs> Let me get him laid right back down there. So the King of Wands is a visionary leader, right? Others find themselves naturally drawn towards you because you're charismatic, focused, and determined, and they believe in the vision that you have. Make sure that you also believe in your vision, though. You're here to have a lasting impact on those around you and the world. Step into that power of the King of Wands which we already saw some of this in your first card here, right? You are most likely a people person and you're really great at being able to lead people and guiding them in some aspect or helping them to even figure out what the best way to tackle a problem or a situation is. I love that. Quickly running out of room here. Let me go ahead and shift this around a little bit. Sorry about that, y'all. I'm still learning how best to do this. <laughs> All right, so your last card is gonna be, where can you take a bigger risk? And we have the Six of Pentacles. Okay, so this card is gonna be all about giving and receiving. Pentacles generally deal with wealth, but this can also be knowledge or other material things. So what I'm gonna get from this is that don't be afraid to ask for help from those around you. You are a very strong person. I mean, you are an ox, right? <laughs> From what I can tell, it's going to be very hard for you to admit when you can no longer carry this burden of being a leader, but you've surrounded yourself with good people and they're already drawn to you and believe in you and the idea that you're going after. So let them help you. It's okay to not be strong all the time. All right. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and move 
these on up a little bit for you, but still keep them in frame. And now I'm going to go ahead and pull some Oracle cards for you as well to give you a little bit more insight on this journey. So first off, we have nature. Nature, of course, has a profound effect on our well-being. It increases your creativity, improves your focus, it can ground you, and even can help lighten your mood. So this card is going with what your greatest inner strength is. So on top of this th three of pentacles here, I feel like in addition to being a bridge for people that you also have a very grounding presence naturally, you are a rock and someone who can help others when they're in need. Oh, that's cute. So then second I have for you, reflect. <laughs> I love this. Legit, what did I say? With justice here, question everything, challenge yourself. Without reflecting, we can end up repeating the same patterns that we've been doing over and over and over again, and then we're not able to reach our full potential. Make sure that you're taking some time to just sit for a few moments, maybe even go out in nature here, and just reflect on any patterns that you are repeating in your life that keep coming up. And maybe it's keeping you from searching for that truth, from searching out your greatest power. So next we have self-love. Oh my goodness. Leo's be all about that self-love. So what I'm getting for this is that spirit really said, take time to celebrate you. What you need to celebrate is you. I struggle with self-love daily and I know how debilitating that is. Make sure that you're carving out time daily. Check in with yourself. The relationship that we have with ourselves is going to be the most important relationship of your life. It is the most intimate relationship we can experience as a human. So ask yourself, what do you need from me? Not me personally. What do you need from you? <laughs> Or how? ask yourself, how can I support you, body? What will nurture you in this moment? How can I deepen this feeling of wholeness within myself? When you're at home in your body, everything is a little bit easier to tackle. All right, and then the last bit of Oracle card I have here on this bit is gonna be share wisdom. I'm shook. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we got share wisdom on top of your six of pentacles here, right? So legitimately give and take, right? It's easy to underestimate everything that you have learned, all of this leader potential that you have. It's easy to count that out, but don't be afraid to offer what you've learned and share it with others. There are people who are wanting you to lead them, needing you to be in that power, be in that king of wands energy. So don't be afraid to share that wisdom with others. And also don't be afraid to listen to them as well, right? Give and take. Everyone has that unique perspective and we need to keep learning and growing as a collective. So now I actually have two more Oracle cards for you. These are actually gonna be pulled from the Fairy Oracle deck from Brian Froud and Jessica Macbeth. If you've watched the movies, The Labyrinth or The Dark Crystal, you may recognize this art style a little bit. Brian was actually the lead designer for these movies and that is why I picked the cards because I love them. Also, we went for kind of a fall vibe, right? We got our fall can ah! Sorry, pile number one. We have our fall candles. Um, and so all of these cards are kind of a little bit darker and I thought they really fit the mood. So I'm actually gonna read from the book on these because y'all, they came with, I mean, this is a chunk of a book, right? This is not just a, a little, little book we get in the booklets most times. So I'm going to read these directly from the book. So the first card I have from you from this deck is going to be the gloomiest doom. I'm going to plop him down right there and get the book open for you. All right. So gloomiest doom is all about self pity. Um, <laughs> Believing in yourself is what I'm going to go with. So I don't want to go like this super negative. It's all about self-pity, but it's time to face the fact that our attitudes and beliefs about ourselves are our own. We may have learned them from others, but the others are not responsible for them in the here and now. We are. If we choose self-pity and pessimism, we make a choice to make our lives worse. 
When this card appears in a reading, it indicates that this is a time when understanding that concept is especially important. A time when there is some sort of a crunch in a situation that offers someone the opportunity to notice and change such self-destructive habits. If it is for yourself, you know what you need to do. If it is for someone else, you may wish to consider how you might support them in this opportunity for a change. So sharing that wisdom, the yoke of leadership is heavy, right? So I really get that this is also telling you that sometimes you may be feeling down and out and just so heavy from the burden that you're carrying. And it could be easy to kind of get wrapped into this, oh, woe is me, I'm in this position, right? But make sure that you don't get trapped in it. So the description of the gloomiest doom says, gloomiest doom is ready and willing to help us explore just how awful it feels, just how bad it is, how hard done by we feel, and what has made us feel like that in the first place. It is very important to really get to know these feelings or how you can possibly let them go if you don't properly know them in the first place. Our feelings need to be fully acknowledged and understood or we just tuck them away and hide them from sight until they appear again, maybe in a different guise. So yes, make sure that you feel into those feelings, but don't get trapped there. Okay, and maybe this could also be, again, sharing your wisdom. Maybe you are actually dealing with someone who is in this state. You're the leader and they're following you, but they're feeling like they're in this kind of dooming gloom state. Share your wisdom. Share, them, share with them how you have gotten through this as well. Next card I have is going to be the Singers of Courage. Someone once said that courage is not the absence of fear, but that which enables us to experience fear not and not be stopped by it. <laughs> it also is what enables us to do what we believe to be right, even when there is no pressure from others around us to do otherwise. It is what enables us to go ahead into the unknown or the perilous, where there are no guarantees of safety or security. So most people have decided by the age of three or four what they need to do in order to survive. From this decision, the belief about how the world is and most of our fears and self-limitations grow. Have we the courage to discover, hello, reflect, <laughs> seek your truth, <laughs> and break through these limiting beliefs and awaken to greater possibilities and go for our objectives, that king of wands energy here. We need to transcend our fears and accept the gift of courage. All right. And then I have one final card for you, and it is going to be, oh, Prosperity lies ahead with the new moon in Taurus. Oh my goodness. Literally, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself and you can have what you want. Easy peasy. <laughs> So that is all I have for you, pile number one. Please, please, please believe in yourself. That is the overall message that I got from this. You are such a strong and powerful soul and you have so much to offer the world. I hope that you have an absolutely wonderful new moon and I will see you again in the next video. Hello there, pile number two. I'm gonna go ahead and get your candle lit, which you picked the Spiced Pumpkin Patchouli Candle, which honestly, my favorite. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get this lint and send all the warm, cozy vibes your way. And then we'll see what the cards have in store for you. All right. I'm going to get that set up there in the corner for you. I realized in pile number one, I need to set it further back than I thought because <laughs> I ran out of room very quickly, but that's fine. She's learning. All right. So I'm, whoop. So the basic layout for this reading is going to be four main tarot cards, and then I'm going to be adding more oracle cards on top of that to help give us some additional meaning to the cards, okay? So the questions that I ask are going to be, what are your greatest inner strengths? How do you step into that inner power? What traits do you need to celebrate more? And what areas in your life do you need to take bigger risk in? So let's go ahead and see what the cards have for you. So for the first card, so your greatest inner strength we have... Oh, the Ten of Cups. How cute. So what you can see here, we have this cute little family of narwhals celebrating underneath the northern lights here in the sky. So your greatest inner strength is going to be that you have strong, 
strong, strong, strong connection to others. You're able to forge true and authentic bonds with the people around you, which is so incredibly important in this day and age. You're able to appreciate and support others and help others reach their highest potential as well. And you truly love seeing your loved ones succeed and live their best life. You also have a very strong sense of intuition and following your heart. That's adorable. <laughs> All right, so now how do you fully step into your inner power, okay? All right, we have the Nine of Pentacles reversed. Okay, believe in yourself. You are enough. Your skills are valuable and you're deserving of nice things. I get the sense that maybe, pal number two, you work too much. Um, hustle culture is praised now more than ever, but this type of work simply isn't sustainable. We have to stop and remember why. Why are we working so hard? Remember what is truly important to you, these connections, okay? Remember that your connections that you make with people are more important than anything. And don't be afraid to take time out for yourself. We don't always have to be in that hustle, get things done mindset. What you're doing is more than enough. I'm hearing that very strongly. What you're doing is more than enough, okay? <laughs> I feel like that's a little bit for me too, ouch. <laughs> All right, so what do you need to celebrate more, pal number two? You have, ooh, the Ace of Pentacles, okay. So Aces in Tarot are gonna be all about your beginnings. Since this is in the suit of Pentacles, this can represent maybe new opportunities coming in. Maybe if we slow down, we can start to see some new opportunities come in, right? Even if that's more new opportunities to make these connections that we had in card number one. So it could be, um, finances, wealth, career, manifestations coming true, and more. I really see this as a continuation of this card as well. Celebrate your little wins here, right? You're enough. What you're doing is enough. Celebrate the wins. Every step along your path is going to be a step closer to reaching your goals. You are a self-starter and your ambitions are going to take you far. And then for our last tarot card pool, we have Ooh, the devil reversed. Okay. All right. This is going to be all about confronting your fears, your fears and anxieties to free yourself from the chains. I'm going to turn this around and kind of show you. You can see they've got chains around their neck here, right? They're celebrating, they're living up, they're living up their best life, um, but they're trapped in this, in this realm. Okay. So we're getting stuck in the cycle, I'm um, going back to your nine of pentacles here. We are getting stuck in this cycle of feeling like we aren't doing enough and that we keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. And then we're going to get burnt out and feeling even further away from our goals, right? If there's something in your life that's holding you back and is detrimental to your physical or your emotional health, it's time to let it go, right? Start small. It doesn't have to be big. Start small. Again, going back to the ace here. Aces are beginnings, right? Celebrate those wins, no matter how small. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move all of these up. And now we're going to pull some more oracle cards to maybe flesh out the reading a little bit more. So we have Speak Truth. Okay. Lay that right down there on top of that. So Speak Truth. That really goes back again here, right on top of this card. What did I talk about? Your intuition and following your heart, being your biggest strength. Make sure that whenever you hear your inner voice, your intuition, follow it. I know it can be hard to um, let go and just trust that what you know is right. I struggle with that myself, but speak your truth. Listen to that intuition, okay? Card number two, we have get wild okay get off that beaten path all right so we talked about hustle culture right we talked about the hustle culture here and this is reaffirming that it's okay to try and take another route to reach your dreams you don't have to go that standard path that everyone walks you can get wild get off that path challenge that social norm and find out what works best for you and your journey it's your journey and your journey alone, right? No one's journey is going to look the same. So it's okay to try different things. Okay, so then we have the warrior. You're going to have to fight for your path, right? 
So whatever path you're going down, we're talked about letting go of things, letting go of maybe people or situations that are detrimental to you. You're going to have to be a warrior for your path. You're going to have to stand up for what you're believing in. You're going to have to speak your truth, stand up for it. Follow this path. You know it's the right path for you. Oh my goodness, I got chills. <laughs> okay, so then the last card I have from this Oracle deck is going to be self-love. Um, we also have this in pile number one. <laughs> self-love. We all need to be kind to ourselves is what I'm hearing with this Leo new moon. Leo energy can be intense. It's very big. Um, so be, be kind uh, with this big energy. <laughs> Breaking down these walls and chains that we have from the devil card here, it's not easy. If you slip up, it's okay. Just start again. Ace beginnings. You got this. It's okay. Be gentle with yourself. All right. So then I have two more Oracle cards for you. These are actually coming from the Fairy Oracle by Brian Froud and Jessica Macbeth. If the art looks a little bit familiar here, if you've watched the Labyrinth or the Dark Crystal, you may recognize the art here. Brian Froud was actually the lead designer on that movie. So I'm going to be reading from the book on these because it's a lot. <laughs> All right, so the first card we have for you is going to be ecstasy. Okay. Ecstasy is something people see. It feels better than good. It feels, well, ecstatic. We experience it in tiny bursts and in bigger surges. It enables us to recognize not only the sacred nature of our own being as an experienced fact, not merely a theory or article of faith. Ecstasy is not something that we can make within ourselves, but something that flows through us when we open ourselves to it. It fills us with the power and the motivation to grow. So breaking those chains there again, to become what we have the positive potential of being. We are here to fulfill our purpose and being here and now on this planet. When we are feeling these surges of joy, we are empowered and we know that we are on an appropriate track for us. So standing up for that new path, bestie, being that warrior. Um, and it leads us to greater meaning and fulfillment in our lives. This card in a reading says, among other things, go for it. It confirms that we are on course and moving in a good direction, that we are in harmony with the great song of life. It says great joy and great accomplishment are within your reach. Its song also lights up and empowers the cards around it. Healing the past. Oh my goodness. And intensifying the moment. Enlightening the future. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> and then the last card I have uh, out of this deck is going to be the Singers of the Chalice. This singer holds a chalice from which a rainbow of energies pours like the richest wine. Trust, love, and patience be patient with yourself okay again breaking chains is not easy these are things we think of having or not having we even give ourselves credit for having them as if we made them ourselves and yet they are natural energies of the cosmos which flow all around us through the chalice and through us when we are open to them and flow around us when we're blocking them so with the help of the singer of the chalice and of the fairies too you can get this one feeling that is all the good feelings in one unconditional love Trust, hope, healing, patience, and so on. Open is open. Be open. If you don't know how to ask, it is right there. Okay. And then the last card I have for you is going to be one of the Moonology cards. And we have your commitment is being tested. Okay. Show up for yourself. Show up for yourself. That's pretty much it. Show up for you or yourself. What you believe to be true is true. You've got this. <laughs> All right, pile number two. That was your reading for the new moon in Leo. I hope that it helped and just know that it's okay to follow your intuition and choose another path. Stand up for another path. We've got a lot of inner work going on here with that devil reverse, but if you speak your truth and follow your own path to get off that beaten path, get wild. You're going to go far. Hello there, pile number three. I'm going to go ahead and get your candle lit, which you picked the Autumn Woods candle. And we're going to send all of those warm, cozy vibes your way. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get that up in the 
corner for you. <laughs> and we're gonna go ahead and get started with your reading. So the basic layout for this reading is gonna be four main tarot cards. And then I'm gonna be adding oracle cards on top of that to help give additional meaning and insight for you. So the questions that I ask are gonna be, what is your greatest inner strength? How can you step into that inner power? What traits do you need to celebrate more? And what areas can you take bigger risk in your life? Let's go ahead and get started with your reading with the tarot cards, okay? So the first card I have for you is going to be for your greatest inner strength is going to be the Hierophant reversed. Okay. So the Hierophant Upright deals with tradition, right? It's keeping the status quo, usually with ideas that have been passed down to us by the people in our lives. So things like religions, family traditions, things like that. I feel like maybe you've been going with the flow for so long that you've lost a little bit of yourself. This card is also associated with Taurus. We also have a bull on the card itself. It's time to put your foot down and start resisting that pull. To put it quite simply, you're ready to start questioning the reasons that you've been given for living or acting a certain way. You're ready to make a break. Um, you're innovative and great at finding new approaches to reach your goals, even if you don't feel that way just yet. I feel like your candle is burning like super bright and messing with the lighting a little bit on the video. Um, let me see if I can fix that a little bit. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> it's a little better. <laughs> Okay, so the next card we have is going to be how to step in your power. And we have the Four of Cups Reverse. It's going to be about pulling yourself out of that rut that you've been in with this first card here, the Hierophant Reverse. It's time to step forward. Leave any regrets, the remorse, any wishful thinking that you've had in the past and focus on moving forward in a positive direction. Take control of your life. Leave this behind. Take control of your life. And know that this may mean leaving patterns or people or things behind, but that's going to be for your best interest. That's going to be for your best interest. You are done with fantasizing about what it could be and staying in the pits of self-pity. So what traits do you need to celebrate more? I feel like we've been a little bit, uh, these are a little bit heavier cards. So let's see, what do you need to celebrate? Okay, we've got the Four of Pentacles reversed. Okay, so you need to celebrate this choice. This choice that you've made to step away from the path that you were made to walk. This card is a card of change and realizing that what you thought would make you happy or what people said would make you happy, it doesn't. It's no longer aligned with you. By doing this, by letting go, you are going to be stepping into a more open and relaxed attitude. Okay, so celebrate this choice. Celebrate the hard choice you've made. So where can you take a bigger risk? Even though I already feel like this is like, this is big stuff, big energy. So what do we have here? We have the moon, okay. Also, can we just take a minute to appreciate like how hecking beautiful, I messed with the brightness, but like how beautiful this card is. Oh my goodness. Let me go ahead and pull back down that brightness there a little bit. Sorry about that, y'all. We're learning. <laughs> Um, so the moon, your pile has been all about big change, almost an upheaval, a complete turnaround from life as you've known it. So the moon indicates a time of maybe uncertainties and illusions when nothing is what it seems. So feel into your intuition here, pile number three, on this new path that you've chosen to take. You're leaving everything behind. You're going to have to believe in yourself now and just take a look at what's in front of you. Um, trust what you see instead of what other people are telling you that you see. Let go of the conscious mental block and negative self-talk that you may have. Set your new intentions now with this new moon in Leo to fully embody a new and empowered version of yourself that is strong and secure and who they are without the influence of others. We're going to go ahead and move these on up. I feel like this has been really big energy. So we're going to go ahead and like we did with the other piles, we're going to pull some Oracle cards to maybe give us a little bit more insight into this for you. Okay. So we have, 
Okay, don't panic. Don't panic. Uh, we have the death card, and the death card here is going to read just like the death card in tarot. Okay, it is all about an ending, right? We already got that here. You're leaving things behind. You're leaving a chosen path, or not a chosen path, but a path you've been asked to walk. So this is the ending. This is the change, or the metaphorical death, right? It's currently happening, or it's on the horizon, right? So maybe you haven't decided to leave just yet, and this is this is coming. You may feel shaken, raw, uncertain, and this is okay. This period that you're going through right now is a preparation to prepare you for the journey of what's to come and this new adventure that you're going to be taking and abundance is coming. It just needs the space to manifest. You just need this time to go through this transformation and fully process it. Okay, so then we have get curious. Okay, I love that. Uh, when you feel stuck, which again, I get the feeling that you have because of the Hierophant here. When you are stuck and cynical and bored with life, tapping into your curiosity can spark a wildfire. There is so much in this world that we are never going to understand. So this wonder that you have, these questions you're asking, it can help to start a snowball to passion and excitement and things that you're actually going to want to do in this new path in life. So again, back to that Hierophant first. why? Why are these traditions and social norms the way they are? Get curious. Ask questions. Ask why do things have to be this way? Don't take one of the things I hate the most is the saying of, oh, well, that's just the way it's always been. You are being told to to question that to go out there and question why these big social constructs that have been around for forever. Why are they the way that they are? <laughs> Why are we doing these things? Um, you'll be surprised at how things start to unfold for you. Next, we have the underworld. Okay. And that reaffirms with your moon card here. The underworld represents a pause. The underworld is a pause. A time to go into yourself and just acknowledge where you're at currently. This is the space where you're meant to be transformed. Give yourself permission to be in this in-between. Be okay with taking a pause. Welcome in the changes that are coming, the things that you're leaving behind, even if that means mourning them, right? So you take a moment, take your pause, and then you're going to be filled with this fire of rebirth. And then the last bit of Oracle card I have for you on this one is going to be Get Wild. Okay. All right, so we have Get Wild and Get Curious. <laughs> Lots of action coming for you. Um, we also had this in pile number two. There's actually been a couple cards that have repeated across the piles. So maybe if you feel called to, go ahead and listen to pile number two. There was also a lot of breaking down of past barriers, breaking down chains in that one as well. They also had Get Wild. So get off the beaten path. It's really just affirming everything that you've had here. Get off that beaten path. Make your own path, challenge those social norms, and find what works best for you and your journey. And I'm going to have two more oracle cards for you, and these are coming from the Fairy Oracle from by Brian Froud and Jessica Macbeth. If you've happened to watch the movie The Labyrinth or The Dark Crystal, you may recognize this artwork style. Brian Froud was actually the lead designer for those movies. I'm going to be reading directly from the book on these because... She, she thick. <laughs> it is a novel. <laughs> All right. So the first one we have for you is going to be Bluff the Fleeter. So just as life is becoming surprising and exciting and very interesting. I mean, hello, you literally are an upheaval of your life here, changing your belief systems. Um, Fluff the Foot, Foot Fungus Fairy comes along to check on our feet. He picks up one foot in his remarkably strong hands and looks over the for fluff between the toes and smelly fungi and dirty untrimmed toenails. Lovely. If he finds any of these signs of disrespect for our feet and for Earth Mama walking on her with grubby feet, yuck. He marks them by making holes in our socks. If things are really bad, he sends mice to eat our dancing shoes, so we'll be forced to dance barefoot in the dewy meadows under the moon. If that happens and we have snow instead of dew, well, that's just your tough luck, human. So essentially, <laughs> what this card is telling you is breathe ground and center maintain or recover your sanity by staying 
firmly on the ground. Do this now. It is important grounding yourself. Important information is coming your way, but you can only receive it properly if your feet are on terra firma and your head is well connected to the rest of your body. So make sure you're taking time to ground, which again, you are going through a lot here, pile number three. So making sure you take time out in your underworld to make sure that you're grounding yourself so that you can fully move into this next phase of your life and take that path less traveled. Okay. And then we have the Singers of Healing. Oh my goodness gracious, I love that. The song of this singer has powerful healing of deep wounds of the spirit, wounds that can destroy mortal and immortals alike. Faith betrayed, oh my goodness, love dishonored and trust abandoned, and other injuries of the spirit all inflict Serious wounds, which are reflected in the body and illnesses and injuries. Through the song of healing, we may be restored and renewed, but only if the wounded one is prepared to forgive and let go. Returning to love and compassion, as always with gifts of the spirit, healing is offered, not forced, and it requires active participation on our part. True healing must take place on all levels at once, body, mind, and spirit. These levels are linked all in one piece, and we cannot expect change one without changing the others. Our bodies do not do things all on their own. The links between the different aspects of being are many, complex, and often obscure. And yet the principle of healing them is simplicity in itself. We need only to let go of the things that are hurting us and nurture ourselves with things that benefit us. So simple, yet so difficult. Healing is something that flows through us, not from us. And as such, we are inevitably affected by its passage. Drawing this card tells us a, both a need and an opportunity for healing ourselves and perhaps others as well. Healing is not something you do, it's something you are. All right. All right, and then the last card I'm going to have for you, pile number three, is going to be one of the Moonology cards, and we have Hold Your Vision. <laughs> I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory. You are going through a lot of changes. Hold your vision of what you want your life to be like, what you want to feel like steady in your mind's eye throughout this whole process. It'll be worth it. I promise. All right, pal number three, that is all that I have for you. I hope that you can be kind and gentle with yourself this next month as there is a lot, and I mean a lot going on. Know that it's okay to retreat into your underworld and just be. You can't change the world in one day. All right, everyone. So that is going to be the end of our pick a card for the new moon in Leo. I hope that you all enjoyed this video and that it helped give you some guidance on what to focus on for the next lunar cycle. Let me know which one of the piles you picked and what you felt you resonated the strongest with down in the comments below. Also, let me know if you'd like to see more pick a cards from me here on the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and please don't forget to go ahead and watch Chloe's video as well for what you need to release in this new moon. I love you all so very much and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!